Hello everyone and welcome to this week's tutorial. In this tutorial we are going to learn how to melt ice using VDB. First of all I would like to thank you for all the great feedback and support that I got after last week's tutorial. I'm really glad that it was helpful for you and I'm really hoping to make this a weekly series so we can have this each week and learn new stuff and uh, progress in our Houdini journey together. In order to create this effect, first we are going to create a box, then we are going to deform it so it greatly resembles an ice block, then with the risk of repeating myself, we are going to use the past week's technique in order to melt it but we are going to do some tweaking and modifications to it so we achieve this melting towards the bottom sort of effect, then using RBD we are going to make it fall down so it looks like as it melts it's, it's getting closer to the ground and lastly we are going to create a fully VDB setup in order to simulate that puddle below our ice block. So without further ado let's get started. Ok so in the first part we are going to create a box, give it some dimensions, then we are going to subdivide it, I'm using be linear in order to not have it subdivided in a smooth way in the first step. Then I'm using another subdivide to get more detail and to smooth out the edges. Then using a point vop with some noise, I'm just deforming it a bit so it's not like a perfectly straight block of ice. Then I'm get adding some UVs to it. And here I created the setup in order to do some chips on the edges, like those. And for this I'm going to show you a small uh, wrangle script that can help you detect the edges of, of any shape. So in order to detect those we are going to create a wrangle. And inside this wrangle we are going to use the near point fu function in order to find the closest 15 or so points. Then we are going to create a float attribute which we are going to initialize with 0. Then we iterate through each of those 15 or so points. We get their normal and we cal calculate the dot product between the uh, the current points normal and the point that we found normal and we accumulate those in a dot attribute. So if you don't know the dot product basically is uh, the calculation between two vectors that returns the sine function between the oh, the sine fu function of the angle between those two vectors. So if we accumulate this we can find the areas where the normal has an abrupt change of direction and if we fit this together between some values as you can see the difference is really small here we can isolate the edges and after this we can scatter some points on those edges using the color as a density attribute then we randomize the p-scale the orientation then I'm iterating some uh, dodecahedrons on those points, I'm copying them, I'm subdividing them, I'm adding some extra detail with the mountain, then I just boolean subtract those out of the main shape and then I color it back to white so we can see it better in the viewport. From here on now we get into the second part of this video where we are going to do the melting. So in order to do the melting the same as let, last week we are converting this shape to a VDB. We also make sure to have the uh, UV installed as a as volume as well. Then inside our solver we have again the same setup with a VDB effect and with a VDB analysis set to gradient. And here we have a volume VOP. Inside this volume VOP we again uh, import our velocity, we again negate it, we are again using a constant in order to control the speed of the melt and here we also use a noise but things get a little more complicated. So what we have here is a technique that I'm using when I need to offset the position of a noise but I don't want it to look 
completely linear as if the noise gets translated. And what I'm doing is I'm deforming the position before feeding it through the actual noise I intend to use in order to deform or color or mask an attribute. And uh, let me actually demonstrate this to you really quickly. So let's say we have grid. Let's sample this really fast. Let's give it a lot of points so we see what we are doing. Then let's add a point pop. And let's add a turbulent noise. And let's connect it to color. Let's say we use parse. Okay, so right now if I want to offset this noise on one axis only, as you can see the noise just translates from from minus from my x to minus x and it's not it doesn't look that real or that organic so in order to make this look more believable what we can do is we can create a secondary noise we make sure that this one is a 3d noise and we add it to our initial position so we deform it a bit so what is happening right now is that we see the actual position of the points but when the noise is sampled, it's sampled not from this position that we see here but from this position. Let me increase the frequency a bit so it's more clearer. So now if I'm offsetting this noise, let me increase the amplitude actually because I think I've made it too small. So now if I'm offsetting this noise, as you can see, it it also deforms and it looks much more natural and believable. And playing with things like the frequency and the roughness and the amplitude here, we can we can really control this effect and give it give it a really different looks depending on the effect we are looking for. So we use the same technique here of having a turbulent noise that's used to control sort of the the speed and the areas on which our noise affects the melt we use this noise to deform the position so we don't have a linear movement of the first noise then here we control the offset using the time attribute which is the current time in seconds which i'm then multiplying by minus 0.1 so it goes towards minus y instead of positive y so our melt is going downwards and not upwards then here i'm adding a constant which i'm using as sort of a seed in order to to change the effect of how the noise looks really fast and also another thing that i've added here is i've created a relative bounding box which if you don't know creates an attribute that's mapped from 0 to 1 depending on the bounding, bounding box of, of each axis so here I'm using the y, uh, the y part of it again so what is going to be it's going to be 0 at the bottom and 1 at the top and I want it to be the opposite I want it to be 0 at the top and 1 at the bottom so I'm using a complement node and then I'm multiplying this with, with my noise before finally multiplying it into our velocity chain. So what this achieves is that there's going to be the full effect of the melt at the bottom of the, of the ice cube. And then at the top there's going to be less to no, to no effect to it. And what I did with this was I attempted to simulate the fact that there's a heating source at the bottom of the cube that melts it up, that melts it sort of upwards so it always melts from the bottom part towards the top part of the, of the ice cube and here is the final effect like in the previous week we are using a vdb combined set to subtract we are converting back to polygons and we are using these functions 
in order to create a mask by sampling the value of this SDF that's sort of the opposite of this as this this SDF and then we compare this to a threshold so we can control our mask and here I'm also again uh, putting the the UV from the volumes back to the points and what this achieves is these UVs that are sort of deforming in a really believable way which when combined with our texture is going to create this sort of a wavy effect that's going to make this look even more like ice that sort of melts as you saw in my render at the beginning of the tutorial. Here I'm just time shifting this so that toward the first 20 frames nothing happens. You will see why I did this in a bit. Then I'm packing this and I'm transforming it upwards a bit so it doesn't intersect with the ground. And here I have a basic RBD setup in order to make this fall as it melts because right now our effect has the ice cube sort of stuck in the air as it melts and I want this to look like it's sitting on a surface and that surface is hot and it melts the, the ice cube. So in order to achieve this I created a basic RBD setup. Here I just made sure that this RBD packed object is set to create deforming active object and here I gave it no bounce and I increased the density so it uh, it looks more heavy but other than that everything is default here you can also experiment with concave which will give you much more accurate uh, collisions but what I've observed is it also makes our simulation more unstable and it gives it sort of a tremble that's not really believable so I stuck with convex then I added just gravity a ground plane and inside the rigid body solver I increased the constraint iterations again to get rid of that RBD tremble as much as possible and also really important I increased the sleeping time because this is not a re ve very sort of explosive or really active movement so if you leave it to the default sleeping time after a while the dotnet the rigid body solver is going to think that this geometry is not doing anything so it will sort of freeze it and not update it anymore and we don't want that we want it to slowly fall down so increase this to a number that's preferably large than your than your current simulation and here it is You can see that as it melts, it sort of balances. And it falls like towards the front of it because it gets heavier here. And towards the end, as this melts, it's also falling down from that side, which looks really cool. After this, we are finished with our sort of VDB slash RBD simulation of the ice but also what I wanted to create was a puddle underneath the ice cube and I didn't want to get complicated with something like a flip sim so what I did was again a VDB advect sort of setup so here I'm converting this back to polygons I'm also creating a box at the bottom I'm also turning that into a VDB I'm intersecting those two then inside the solver I have again the usual suspects a VDB a VDB analysis and a VDB advect but I'm also always adding the current frame to to the simulation creating sort of an emission Then I'm also uh, using a VDB activate in order to slightly expand the VDB active box so it so the simulation doesn't catch up with it and it uh, it clips on it. 
Uh, here instead of a volume warp I used a volume wrangle because the setup was is much more simple. And here inside this volume wrangle I'm basically multiplying the velocities y direction with 0.01 so we have little to no inflation on the up axis and I'm also multiplying this with a noise so it doesn't progress that linearly it has a more organic look to it then I'm expanding this a bit I'm also in order to create better better looking interaction with our ice cube I'm combining them back together I'm smoothing them out a bit and then I'm taking the ice cube back and smoothing it a bit more again before converting it to polygons so we have this effect which from close up it looks kind of jagged we would probably need more resolution to to get this to hold up to like a close-up but from a distance is just fine and here are the effects together so this was our melting effect using nothing but VDBs I hope this was helpful for you the project file will be on my Patreon, so make sure to check that out. Also, it would really help me if you would like this video and subscribe to my channel. And I'm hoping to really make this a weekly thing. So, see you next week with another cool tutorial and bye bye!